Welcome to Making the Cut Podcast with Chris Hill and Sean Winner, where we help you succeed in life and business by sharing principles and strategies that guide some of the most successful people in the world. Welcome to the first episode of Making the Cut Podcast. I'm Chris Hill with my co-host, Sean Winter. So, Sean, you and I, we connected, how long ago was it? It had to been, I want to say it was back in June, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was June. I reached out, I saw what you were doing with the book, and I saw a couple of interviews that you had, and I was just launching Entrepreneurial Chef. So, I think I sent you a, a little Facebook message. That's right, man. Yeah, well, because I remember I had just published the book and things were busy. Uh, it was great connecting back then. And, you know, since then we've, we've kept in touch and started talking pretty recently about doing a podcast together. I think we, we both saw that we had some kind of core values in common, a lot of the same drivers and things that we wanted to do with our businesses and careers. So, you know, here we are now. I think the one thing that really stood out to me is what you were wanting to accomplish in terms of helping people succeed, not only in the culinary industry and not only in the business side of things, but in life in general too. And that's something that I'm extremely passionate about is helping people succeed in life and business and being able to come together and do this podcast now that accomplishes that and helps people essentially quote, make the cut in life or business. Uh, I'm super excited. Yeah, man. Yeah, I've been a huge podcast fan for the last couple of years. Helped me through some of the, the tough times and also kind of helped me to keep pushing my limits to, to accomplish more and more. I think one of the biggest problems I have with a lot of podcasts out there is you see the end result and you hear these great interviews with, with successful individuals in different walks of life, but you don't really see the the uphill climb or the challenges they get there. So, you know, one thing we, you and I talked about is, is getting the chance to really dive into some of the backstories and telling the full story of these entrepreneurs, marketers, business people. Yeah, that and being able to share very actionable advice that someone can turn around and begin implementing. I think you and I both agree that it's one thing to hear something, to um, get exposed to something, but it's another thing to turn around and adopt it and implement it immediately and start down a path of change. So that's that's one thing that we definitely want to expose as well as is, is strategies behind some of the most successful people in different industries and strategies that you can use in your life and your business and implement right away. For sure, man. And speaking of change, You've had some exciting changes happening recently, but you want to give folks a little bit of, of your backstory and kind of how you've gotten to where you are now? Yeah, absolutely. You know, with me, I had a very eclectic background, and I mean very eclectic, and, I, and I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, it's actually funny. You'll laugh at me. I don't think I've told you this one, but when I was about eight, nine years old, I used to collect baseball cards, football cards, basketball cards, and this is the sad part. I could not tell you how the game was played <laughs> at <laughs> all. I couldn't tell you how it was played. I, I, I didn't watch it for that reason. I knew the stats and I knew the card value. And my father at that time, he gave me a blank checkbook. And I took this checkbook every single month and I would balance the value of my card uh, set. So all of them, you know, baseball, football, basketball, hockey, whatever I could collect, I would get my hands on and I would balance it. And so I'd get the, they called it the Beckett at the time. So I'd get the Beckett yeah. every single month and I would sit there and balance it out. And I'd go to my father and, and we would talk about the percentages. I'm up by 10%, I'm down 10% or I've got $537 and 83 cents. You know, my eyes would light up. It was, uh, was kind of interesting. So I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit from a very young age and with me, I started in the music industry, and I mean, I even did martial arts and competitive fighting. I mean, like I said, it was very eclectic, but uh, in 2005, I started at Le Cordon Bleu College, so I, that was my introduction into the culinary industry. And one thing that I noticed from 2005 to 2016 in January was that a lot of students entered culinary school, and they had these hopes and dreams of being 
a restaurant owner, they wanted to be a personal chef, they wanted to be famous, but they didn't really understand by the time that they graduated the business fundamentals or didn't really truly understand entrepreneurship. So that's when I decided that I was going to build a platform to help them, help help students and help a lot of people. And that's how you and I connected, obviously, as I launched Entrepreneurial Chef and turned it from a, a, a blog, if you will, a website to then a digital magazine. And now I've got a group launching that's starting to pick up steam as well and more things on the horizon, as you and I have discussed. Yeah, man. Well, before we get into me, some, some more exciting things is you're you're happily married with a beautiful new baby girl that came well, a few weeks ago. That's right. She is 15 days old. <laughs> she is the tiniest little thing, man. She was born uh, five pounds, nine ounces. It was, uh, it was a trip to see. She's just so small, but goodness gracious. I'm already wrapped around her finger. I've already put the credit cards under her pillow. That's it. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. And it's, I think it says a lot for you to have taken this kind of leap of faith at this point in your life where you obviously have a lot at stake and, and now you have other people that are dependent on you to you know, make it happen. Absolutely. And that's what entrepreneurship is all about. It's, it's taking that leap of faith. I think I heard a quote once. It says, uh, you've got to have faith that you're going to jump off the cliff and either find something wings, solid, yeah. yeah, find something to solid to land on or, or, or grow wings to fly or something like that. And I mean, that's, that's just, uh, that's just, you know, that's how it is. You just jump off. Uh, so you let's, let's hear a little bit about your background for everybody to hear. Yeah, man. Yeah. I think for me, a lot of, of my kind of mantra has been learning how to grow wings on the way down, you know, not knowing exactly how to get there, but knowing that along the way I'll, I'll flesh it out and figure things out. So, you know, for me, I grew up in Atlanta, uh, had a great family there. Um, went to university of Alabama, got a double major in English and Spanish realized that those two, uh, disciplines weren't going to get me very far in the, in the real world. So I went back to, to grad school, got a master's in marketing, but along the way I'd worked in restaurants since I was 18, starting at the Atlanta fish market and really, you know, kind of like you, I, I got my, my, feet wet and realized you know, how much I loved not only the food side of things, but making people happy and taking care of people. So I, I finished grad school, jumped into consulting, had a, you know what everyone would have considered to be like the perfect job, you know, making good money, uh, uh, set myself up to where I could be you know, successful down the road. But I looked at my life. I wasn't happy. I was really, I was just miserable. I was, I was working every day. I'd stay up drinking with my sister every night because we actually lived together at the time, you know, so not wanting to go to sleep because I had to wake up the next morning to do the same thing over and over again. So I decided to make a change. I called my cousin who owns some restaurants in Virginia. I moved up to work with him, I helped turn one of his restaurants around, open up our own restaurant together uh, called Three Way Cafe, sold my share in that about a year ago back in May of 2015 and moved back home to Atlanta where I was going to open up uh, a restaurant there with my brother. I was, I, you know, I felt like I'd had so many challenges getting to that point because the restaurant in Virginia, I was there for about five years and, and it took three years to, to make any sort of profit. Um, meaning I essentially worked 50 hours a week for free for, for the first three years, which was hard and challenging. And those are my own stories that we'll t maybe touch on later on in the podcast or a different episode. But for me, um, it was like everything was coming together. And then this whole restaurant in Atlanta fell apart. At the same time, I started building up my personal brand more and more you know, after doing you know, TV and TEDx talks and things like that. Ended up, you know, now I have a, a huge following on you know, social media and, and have it been able to you know, write the book and in the process of writing you know, the second book, um, and you're speaking and writing and just really loving life. You know, when you're talking about your story, one thing that you and I both had in common and that we've talked about before is just having to push through so much challenges or adversity or, or, or working through those dark times, you know, as, as entrepreneurs, because it's, it's extremely difficult when you feel like the world is against you because everything continues to go wrong, but you just also simultaneously believe that 
you're going in the right direction. It's, it's, it's like you have this cognitive dissonance and I know you've experienced it. I've experienced it. I mean, I experienced it to the nth degree this year with so many different things. We can, we'll talk about those in later episodes, but you've had it as well. And just to kind of backtrack for a second, what, what was it like for you when you finally started seeing that light at the end of the tunnel, as you were leaving that period of time, when you felt like things were just not working at that moment? You know, I've always had this mentality of, like I kind of started chatting a minute ago about, is of, you know, I'll figure it out. I'm not there yet. I don't have the, the, the tools or I don't have the knowledge, but I'll figure it out. And for those first, you know, steps along the way, not being able to figure it out and not feel like you're making any progress is hard. It's challenging. And there are times when, you know, people in my you know, close circle, family, friends, you know, felt like, I was going down the wrong path for me. I always kind of knew though. So for me, just getting those kind of first few steps of validation, probably starting with when my, my first article, dear chefs went viral, that was kind of, it didn't, you know, it wasn't a paycheck. It didn't put any money in my bank account, but it was, it was a validation that, okay, you know, maybe you are doing the right thing. When I got emails from, you know, a thousand people all over the world saying like you helped change me, you helped save my, my marriage, my career, et cetera, et cetera. So for me, it was just getting a little bit of feedback saying you are doing the right thing. You are going on the right path. Keep going. You'll figure it out on the way. And, and, you know, for me, that's been huge. Just getting those little bits of feedback along the way. How about for yourself? Yeah. And before we jump into that though, it's the epitome of why people say you've got to do things that are meaningful because if they're not, it's there's there's money can come, but money can go and you'll just be empty at the end of the day if you're not making meaning. So for you, you had a validation point that was extremely meaningful because you were impacting people. And as we started off, we said, you know, we're, we're very much in common in the sense that we want to help people. So there must have been just so much so much joy that you experienced that you were finally starting to make traction there. I can only imagine. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, like the, the, the challenge is also, it's kind of like the chicken or the egg. The challenge is also part of what makes it meaningful. You know, if, if anyone could do it, then we would all do it. But since you or I or whoever has the, the, you know, inter- internal, the fortitude to keep going it says a lot about who we are, but also it, it, it attaches a certain piece of, of, of meaning that's far beyond a check could provide for anybody. And now to zero in on challenge, Chris, you're absolutely right. If we all woke up tomorrow and we had everything that we wanted and more, what's going to happen the next day? Well, we'll we're going to enjoy it. Maybe next week. Great. We're going to enjoy it next month, next year. What about the year after that? When there's no more challenges and you don't feel like you're growing as a person, you slowly start dying inside. That's why individuals that might be working for somebody, an employer, where they're doing the same thing every single day, same thing over and over and over, they are dying a slow death inside because they're not being challenged. And it's that challenge, it's that ascension, whether it's going to be in our consciousness or or our knowledge or wisdom, whatever it's going to be, that's what we thrive on. That's what we seek. So I love how you said that. It definitely, the challenge makes it meaningful. And, And when you can accept that, when you can almost enjoy that. And what I mean is enjoy the obstacles that you're going to go through, enjoy the setbacks and manage what they refer to as your explanatory style. That's your self-talk. When you can manage that, you can convince yourself that all of the challenges are worthwhile, all the setbacks are worthwhile. And when you do that, you mitigate the downtime between you executing and not executing. So I love how you said that. And it's so true. That leads us into what a lot of people can expect from the podcast itself. I think the the three areas or the the kind of the overall context that we want to provide for this podcast is information that's going to be insightful, inspirational, and instructional. So that's going to be the compass of this podcast. And we're going to do so with different people in various industries. Individuals like what? You have a meeting next week with Seth Godin, right? Exactly. You know, I cannot wait to go up and, and hang out with Seth, Seth Godin next week. He's been somebody super inspirational for me, but he's also been very insightful and instructional. And I think he'll be able to pr- provide a lot of the same 
types of, of resources and ideas for, for our guests. You know, I think at the end of the day, our biggest goal is to pr- provide a ton of value for all those that are listening. That and to help open people's perspective. Because I think when you can look at things from different angles, it unlocks a sense of creativity. It helps you problem solve. And, and when you can hear some of these stories from individuals that have done things in other industries and been able to climb to the top or, or make the cut, as we say, then it can help you in your own life. Right. I mean, like I mentioned before, so many people have these these great successes and these incredible wins in their lives and their careers, but we don't really hear much about, about what it took to get there. So, you know, for me, hearing a lot of these things and even knowing Seth Godin's backstory has helped me to get really to where I am today and to kind of keep going when things weren't always going well, but also uh, when things are going well to, to be able to keep moving things forward. It's, it's, I think a good balance and, and hearing that is, is also good evidence for those that are in the struggle right now to, to know that, Hey, like I, I can keep going. I can create something really successful and meaningful for my life. If, if I have these other examples that have done it before as well. And additionally, when you said when things are going well, it's to not get complacent because complacency is another form of slowly dying inside you either. If you're not being challenged at something, then sometimes you can, I mean, you can get angry, frustrated and all those different things, but you could become complacent. And, and if you're not growing in some way, then, uh, they say, if you're not, you're not growing, you're dying. Uh, so I think that's also an important component. Like you said, is, is how do you continue on when things are going well? How do you maybe rise to that higher level when you reached a level that you felt was the highest one for you? And I think you mentioned before too, which is really valuable, is that it's not just going to be from one area or walk of life, but it's really people with varying stories, perspectives, from business to life to health, things that we all need to really create that whole experience that is is uh, meaningful and important to us. Yeah. So if all this sounds good, you are absolutely in the right spot. Uh, You'll have an opportunity to engage with Chris and I in a couple of different ways. You can, number one, head over to chrishillonline.com forward slash podcast. We'll have, as each episode is released, we'll have notes, we'll have resources that are listed, uh, resources that maybe some of the guests are going to provide to the audience for free, uh, those types of things. You can subscribe on wherever it is that you're going to listen to, whether it's going to be iTunes, whether it's going to be Stitcher, uh, where, wherever. So we would appreciate that and, and share it as well. If you have, uh, have the opportunity to share it and you think it's going to benefit some other individuals, then please do. Because chances are, if, if it's something that you find to be valuable, the people in your life, maybe it's personally, maybe it's in business, will find it valuable as well, even if they aren't actually voicing those opinions. I can tell you for, for me personally, it's been, it's been my struggles and challenges that have helped me to embrace these mentalities. And as a result, by sharing things on my blog or on Instagram or Facebook, other people have been able to connect with the same ideas, even if they didn't know they might have needed them at the time. So I think it's really an opportunity for us to, to just share the, the, the good word, the, the message that a lot of us need to hear and, and are, are dying to hear, even if we don't re- realize it at the time. So, you know, we're doing this for you guys. We're doing it to make a difference, to, to help you to live you know, the best life possible in your, your business, your, your health, your career, and, and most importantly, in your life as a whole. And we want to have a Q&A component, right? So one thing that you'll see upcoming very soon is that you will have the ability to submit a question. If you had a question about whatever it's going to be, whether you're in the culinary industry and you're uh, looking to open up a restaurant and you need some advice as it relates to that, or you're going through a dark period or whatever it's going to be. And and if you're not in the culinary industry and you needed some advice or you knew that we were going to be connecting with a certain individual, whether it's going to be an entrepreneur, an author, a thought leader uh, out there today in the world, then we will give you the opportunity to submit some questions and potentially have your question be asked to that individual and uh, we'll obviously share that with you, whether it's going to be on the podcast, whether it's going to be on the website. And again, that was uh, chrishillonline.com forward slash podcast. So with that, you have an idea of what we're going to do. I hope that you are looking forward to it. I know, Chris, I'm ecstatic. I think you are. 
I cannot wait. I, I, you know, there's something that for for probably a good year or two now, people have said, Chris, when you start a podcast, when are you going to start a podcast? Well, here we are. This is episode one, and episode two will have Seth Godin, like you mentioned before, and we have some other kind of great guests lined up as well. So, so uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting, and we're looking to connect with all you guys. Additionally, if you have any guests that you would like to – to have interviewed, um, let, let us know, let them know. And we would love to you know, try and bring them in as well. So in closing, let's leave you with a thought of the day. How about one of my favorites is the unexamined life is not worth living because you only have one shot, right, Chris? It's, it's, this life is not a dress rehearsal. You don't have multiple chances. So at the end of the day, you got to live to the fullest, right? You're speaking my language, my man. Well, Sean, it's been a pleasure. I look forward to the, the next part of the journey with you and again guys you're listening to making the cup podcast i'm chris hill see you next time hey!